Behold, what could be the biggest spectacle in history. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst Shark Tank pitches. <laughs> <laughs> so when you lose one, you still have a pair. Don't call me, I'll call you. I'm out. For this list, we're looking at the absolute worst products or services ever pitched on the US version of Shark Tank. But we're also taking into consideration the quality of the pitches themselves. Which of these do you think is the worst? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Sticky Note Holder. I have created a product that will keep your sticky notes in place and organized while working at your computer. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I really wish I had a device that could attach post-it notes to my laptop? No, you probably haven't because, well, post-its are already perfectly capable of sticking to things. This example here is an example of what we're all used to seeing. There's been no change in it, there's been no solution to it until today. It's kind of a big part of their job description. Mary Ellen Simonson, the woman pitching this wonderfully useless product, was asking the sharks for half a million dollars in funding. Can you say delusional? For your, Stop the you, madness! Are you out of your mind? Yes. Are you crazy? Yes. Who would give you 10 bucks for that? A, it's lot, a, piece of of a lot of people. To top it all off, she had made zero sales and didn't even have a patent on her invention, which if you're a regular Shark Tank viewer, you'll know is a recipe for a quick rejection. I don't think your product is worth what you're asking, but I do think you have a product there. And I think for $10 a pop on a QVC type what station. What planet did yeah, you come from? No, let me tell you, I think you could sell it. Number 19, iBlock. Okay, so we get that the product slash company is called iBlock, but rocking sunglasses inside is rarely a good look. So we were already skeptical by the time entrepreneur Craig Isaacow suddenly starts yelling and took them off. And I'm seeking $50,000 for 10% of my company because sharks, Americans are being watched. Granted, all of the concerns he raises about laptop and phone cameras are valid, and there's admittedly something appealing about the simplicity of his invention to cover your laptop camera. Unfortunately, that same simplicity also significantly diminishes the worth of the product. There's a solution, sharks. iBlock, the webcam privacy shield. Worse, Isaac Howe himself oversells the device, coming across like a bit of an eccentric conspiracy theorist in the process. Oh you want to say it again? Did you catch it? <laughs> Did we catch it? Boom! iBlock. And people don't like to get into business with eccentrics, especially when people can get the same results they're selling with a simple piece of tape. Number 18, no fly cone. Well, you see the flies that they accumulate. Well, this, you don't see the flies until you actually look to see what you've caught. Heads up, crappy idea coming your way. Entrepreneur Bruce Gaither had an idea that involved using dog poop to attract flies to his trap. So I designed an all natural fly trap and right away we were successful catching them where they feed and breathe. To bring his idea to life, he asked for $25,000 for a 15% stake. Sure, he gets points for bringing his adorable golden retriever onto the show with him, but a cute pup isn't enough to change the sharks' minds. You're, you're kind of creating the problem by leaving the poop outside, aren't you? Aside from the fact that this product can only be marketed to dog owners, the sharks made the legitimate point that no one would want to use the device in their homes for obvious reasons. Even Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane's endorsement couldn't save this doomed pitch. He's your spokesman? He doesn't even have a dog? If I did, I'd be the first guy in line. Number 17, Wink Frozen Desserts. Here's a simple fact of food marketing. If you can come up with an alternative version of a popular treat that tastes great but has fewer calories, people are going to buy it like crazy. The most crucial part of that phrase, however, are the words, tastes great. Uh, we use organic stevia and monk fruit to sweeten it. It tastes kind of, you know, in the middle. This low-cal substitute for ice cream has many selling points, including it being dairy-free, soy-free, gluten-free, and vegan. But as the sharks are quick to point out, much to their dismay, because some of them seemed genuinely interested, it doesn't taste good. What is the substance that this is made out of? Is so the base is pea protein, so it's a vegetable protein, protein base, non-GMO. And so all its virtues become somewhat moot. It'll still sell, sure, but only to a much smaller demographic. And for that simple reason, the sharks walked. Number 16, Squirrel Boss. Now we know squirrels are extremely cute, and they need to eat too. But they are five-pound gorillas, and they are hogs. 
Any pitch that involves herding woodland creatures deserves a great big no, and that's exactly what this one got. Michael DeSanti markets his product as the world's first interactive squirrel-proof bird feeder. The interactive bit is what's key here. So Mike, Mike D, just to be clear, I'm sitting in my house. Yes. I see the little squirrel eating. Yes. I think he's had too much. I zap him. You see, the bird feeder isn't exactly squirrel-proof so much as it is an opportunity for sadists to torture small, fluffy-tailed animals. Animal cruelty aside, the obvious problem here is that you'd need to be sitting around all day holding your zapper at the ready for this product to work. But that means I have to be watching That's the bird feeder. That's our second biggest objection that I get all of the time in public. What's the first? That you have to be watching. It's too expensive, and that's why I'm here. Unless this is a pitch exclusively for the unemployed or infirm, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to anyone. Don't worry, no squirrels were hurt in the making of this episode, we think. But Mike, wouldn't the animal rights people get all over this? You're, you're electrocuting the animals. Number 15, pet paint. Are we charmed by London the Bulldog? Absolutely. Bring any animal into a room and you'll almost immediately grab the attention of everyone in it three animals even better. But founder Abe Geary might have been better off had he just let the animals do the talking. His opening attempt at hype is very over the top. Behold, what could be the biggest spectacle in history. And unfortunately, his wordplay isn't much better. The way he mixes metaphors is a real turnoff, especially his big finale. And like every fashionista, she knows life is a catwalk. When you force two sayings together, you often wind up saying nothing at all. The unfortunate thing is, the paint you can safely use on your pet's product isn't terrible. And when Geary speaks outside the Shark Tank, he's a businessman who actually inspires confidence. His cheesy pitch was just a major misfire. Number 14, Throx. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Edwin Heaven. I'm the creator of Throx, the cure for the missing sock. There's something about the idea of selling packs of three socks that seems more creepy than practical. So when you lose one, you still have a pair. What do you do with the extra sock until you need it? We're kind of torn on this one because on the one hand, the mysterious loss of individual socks is a real problem in our contemporary society. On the other hand though, a simple solution to this problem would be to man up and buy your socks in bulk at Costco so that they'll all look the same and the concept of pairs becomes irrelevant. While Edwin Heaven's presentation is certainly magical, somehow this product seems like it would cause more problems than it would solve. Have you patented this? You cannot patent a package of three socks. Right. Number 13, Eco Mower. Andy Humphrey, creator of the Eco Mower, is another entrepreneur who could have chosen his words more carefully. Though his manual lawnmower has curb appeal, the way he goes about selling it rubs some of the sharks the wrong way. Hey guys, we're gonna reduce the emissions on cars because I've invented a bicycle. Yeah, Damon John is not on board. And as soon as he starts tearing apart the pitch, even sharks who initially seemed open to the concept begin to express similar doubts. The major selling point is that this is a push mower that doesn't require sharpening. But when Damon and company grill Humphrey about this supposed advantage, it quickly begins to lose its competitive edge. You're basically saying you're building a better bike. Number 12, track days. We're seeking $5 million. Whoa. That's a lot of money. In exchange for 34% equity in our production. Pitching a feature length film to the Sharks seems ambitious to begin with, but when it sounds as bad as this, the creators are bound to get eaten alive. So boys, you want 5 million bucks to make a movie. I know how you feel that, you know, you think that filmmaking is a crapshoot, which we completely understand. Making up the pitch team are a former stuntman, a writer, and a producer. When they make their pitch, they have no script, no actors, and no financial backing. Essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be putting a, a, a script together, which is in the process of being rewritten. You don't even have a script yet? The guys make sure to stress that this is not a movie about the popular sport of motocross since they were told there's no viable US market for a motocross movie. No, this is a film about MotoGP, a lesser known sport that's given little to no attention in the United States. They also mention that there's never been a movie made about the sport, but maybe there's a reason for that? You know, I'm a huge motorcycle fan and there's been such a lack of movies made about them. Number 11, Chimera Bodyboard. Honestly, we didn't even need to hear a pitch to be sold on this electric watercraft. A still image with a description would have been enough. So how did such a promising product sink so hard? 
Well, though the sharks seem on board with the concept, the more they heard about inventor Jason Woods, the more obvious it became as to why the Chimera board wasn't already a success story. Chimera's unique heads-up riding position gives you all the thrill and excitement of a conventional full-size watercraft, but at a much safer speed. He had no sales history and had apparently been at it for 10 years. Rarely has such a compelling product received a worse pitch. Thankfully, Woods went out and found himself a more business-minded partner, and years later, the Chimera board returned seeking redemption. Sure enough, Woods and partner Adam Majewski walked away with a deal. Number 10. The Sullivan Generator With your help, and your business acumen, together, we can develop this new technology and leave a lasting legacy of goodness. If we're being completely honest, we're just as baffled by this guy's pitch as the sharks were. He claims to have invented an electric generator that harnesses the spin of the Earth to create electricity. Conveniently enough, the waste that this machine supposedly produces is gold. The waste products are the mineral precipitates, manganese, and gold. What? Gold. Entrepreneur Mark Sullivan, who also markets himself as a songwriter and ladies' clothes designer, among other things, says he's invented over 1,000 products that make over a billion dollars a year in profit. And I'm an inventor with over 1,000 inventions. And the technology I'm offering you today is the Sullivan Generator. Even so, it looks like the sharks have a hard time believing anything this guy says, because it all sounds straight up crazy, especially if you know even a little bit about science. The gold is left in the ocean. Number 9. Elephant Chat Let's address the elephant in the room. Hey, we can appreciate the initial hook here, but apart from co-opting a popular saying, this business model just doesn't have that much going for it. Introducing the elephant in the room. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Acknowledging that you're having issues in your relationship is difficult enough as is, but bringing a stuffed animal in to help? Well, it's not hard to imagine many partners being very put off by the idea. I simply remove the cover and reveal the elephant in the room. So when I get home and I see the elephant is in the room, I immediately know that she has something she wants to talk about. It's undeniably cute, but its application elicits eye rolls from a number of the sharks almost immediately. And we're pretty sure that most viewers at home had a similar reaction. Communication is the key to a good relationship. We're just not convinced this elephant needs to be part of it. Number 8. Cougar Limited The Cougar. Modern. Mmm, sexy. Because what the world really needs is another energy drink especially one with such a small and kind of derogatory target market. Introducing Cougar Energy Drink for Women. Not to mention women between the ages of 35 and 55 hardly seem like the prime demographic of energy drink consumers. Also, how many women can there possibly be out there who self-identify as cougars? Okay, in case you're unclear on the concept, this is an energy drink for women of a certain age who like to date younger men. Isn't a cougar typically older? Because she looks younger than you are. Well, she's been drinking the cougar, the, <laughs> the cougar <laughs> shot for a while. Now, so. I'm 35. 35. Wow, you look, look great. great. Thank Isn't you. that too young to be a cougar? The inventor, Ryan Custer, claims this is, quote, the industry's first gender specific functional beverage, but even that doesn't seem to be true. This product pretty much has nothing going for it, and it really doesn't help that according to Barbara Corcoran, the drink tastes like chalk. Zero and calories, what's that zero chalky sugar. taste I have on my tongue now? Could be uh, maybe the niacin. Number 7. The Skinny Mirror As the old saying goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This product, pitched in Season 7, takes that to a more literal conclusion by offering to trick your eyes into seeing yourself as being more slim than you actually are. Voila! The, um, skinny mirror. Even if it's a not-so-skinny you. The real motivation to slim down is to look at reality, deal with the truth every day, and finally get around the idea that losing weight's hard work. Entrepreneur Belinda Jasmine pitches her invention as a tool to help boost self-confidence, but Kevin O'Leary isn't having any of it. But when I started this company, I said this mirror would not be used to deceive anyone, and that's why I told them. it's doing it every though, day. Even though You're I saying they have lost... to find your little logo down there to figure out what's going on? You can see it. All you gotta do is just take a look. Not only does he take issue with her lack of patent and blind faith in her brand identity, but he also appears to be offended by the concept. 
Jasmine, for her part, tries to keep the momentum going and a smile on her face, but the pitch quickly falls apart, and the tension in the room is palpable. If a customer looks at that, and they look great in that outfit, <laughs> and then they take it home, and they obviously look bad or different, they're not going to be happy. Number six, Wake and Bacon. My product takes a unique approach on waking up in the morning. It's pretty much the only one of its kind. Didn't Michael Scott have this one covered? When I wake up, I plug in the grill. I go back to sleep again. Then I wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. When you want to wake up to freshly made bacon, you just set up a George Foreman grill at the foot of your bed, right? Clearly, this inventor isn't a fan of The Office because he came up with a pig-shaped device with the exclusive purpose of bedside bacon making. And so, inspired, I went home and I built the world's first alarm clock that actually wakes you up with bacon. This is the first idea on our list that actually seems kind of appealing, until you think about the logistics of it. You have to put the bacon in before you go to sleep, and leaving raw meat unrefrigerated overnight seems like a recipe for disaster. Not to mention the whole thing seems like a serious fire hazard. You got no projections whatsoever. You got a pig box that's gonna catch on fire and kill somebody. I'm gonna be sued in the Stone Age. But those problems notwithstanding, Maddie Salen should just keep working on this one. We are intrigued. Hey Maddie, I, I love the face of the pig. Do you have a slogan for this or anything? Rise and swine. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Licky Brush. Where to begin? We get that people love their pets, but we draw the line at holding a giant fake tongue between your teeth and using it to lick a cat. And apparently the sharks feel similarly. So why should you be left out of their intimate bonding ritual? Husband and wife team Tara and Jason O'Mara know their stuff, and they've successfully gotten another product backed by a Kickstarter. Licky Brush is a tongue-shaped brush you can use to finally lick your cat. Just like a mama cat licks her young. But when you start licking a cat during your pitch, it becomes really hard to take you seriously. The sharks are at once horrified and more thoroughly entertained than we've ever seen them before. We've no doubt that there are customers who love this product, but it's just too niche. There is one! <laughs> 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 no. Somebody no. hand you, you, you oh. need to drop a mic right about now. Right? <laughs> Number four, Rolodoc. And what we've realized is that when it comes to communication, medicine is not in the 21st century. Aren't doctors supposed to be smart? Well, brothers and doctors Albert and Richard Amini managed to give a bad name to a well-respected profession, at least in the eyes of Mark Cuban. You're not going to let him tell me how I make money, because there's no chance of you making money on this. Their idea for a mobile app that connects doctors and patients isn't fundamentally stupid in theory, but their pitch was so bad that there's no way anyone would trust their business sense. Sharks, with your investment, we will revolutionize the way we communicate in medicine, but most importantly, you'll help us get rid of these pagers and make some money doing it. They keep throwing in buzzwords like social media without an actual plan to back any of it up. It sounds like what they want to do is create a LinkedIn for physicians, but they have no idea how to get doctors to use their app or how to monetize it. The sharks are understandably a bit harsh with their criticism. It's a valid concern because you don't want to be reading about somebody that actually isn't a surgeon that's right. offering heart surgery. That would be a bad outcome. Absolutely. I don't think they'll be able to get anybody. It's not going to be dangerous if we can't get any doctors. Number three, Euro Club. For every problem, there is a solution. But when it comes to the problem of needing to pee while on the golf course, there must be a better solution out there. Presented by urologist Dr. Floyd Seskin, the Euro Club is a hollow golf club that you urinate into. In Seskin's defense, he does a lot right in his presentation. This is a trademark patent pending product that functions as a self-contained receptacle. He's professional, he has a good sense of humor, and has put in the work. And against all odds, he actually secures an offer, albeit a small investment for a majority share. But that doesn't make this any less silly. This is a novelty product through and through. I'm Can sorry? you get stuck? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's complained yet, but it is the one size fits all right now. Plus, leak proof or not, the idea of carrying a tube full of fresh urine around with you is seriously off putting. Pop up tent with an attendant, I think, to take it to the bathroom. Hey, and you would need several of them. And Number two, Ionic Ear. My name is Darren Johnson and I'm here today to explain the Ionic Ear investment opportunity. One of the all-time worst pitches comes from Shark Tank's very first episode all the way back in 2009. <laughs> you guys are so close-minded. Please let him finish. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Apparently, back in the old days, Bluetooth earpieces were the must-have tech gadget. 
but this guy took it one step further so that you and your Bluetooth would never have to be apart. I'm sorry, where are you implanting this into, a, into another device? What are you implanting this no, into? No, it's actually going into your ear. Pitching a surgically implanted Bluetooth device that's inserted into the wearer's ear canal, Darren Johnson manages to creep the sharks out and get some of the fastest I'm outs in the show's history. Don't call me, I'll call you. I'm out. Okay, I appreciate that. The fact that the device has to be charged nightly by inserting a large needle into one's ear definitely doesn't help his cause. And neither does the fact that he didn't actually get any doctors to approve his product. Surprise, surprise, this product never took off. Darren, here's, here's insanity, here's genius. You're somewhere. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, no phone. Oh boy, where to begin with this one? It's just a fake plastic phone. We agree with the basic point that the omnipresence of smartphones is problematic. Glance away from your phone for a second and look around. Most people within sight are likely staring at one. Step one, pick it up. Step two, hold it. It's that simple. <laughs> But this placebo-type approach of giving people something to just hold in their hand completely fails to address any of the key factors that drive people to their phones. The hunger for communication and the promise of distraction, whether with entertainment or information. With all that being said, we have to give credit where credit is due. It's yeah. cute, but I think pragmatically it's never going to be a very big business. It's like I'm in an alternate world. <laughs> for an utterly useless product, Chris Sheldon and Van Gould put together one heck of an attempt to sell it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.